A Napa guy knows not to judge a man by his car's multicolor paint job or absence of modern gadgetry. Who cares if it's technically old enough to vote and the windows are powered by the strength of your left arm? Your monthly payment is zero, and it'll stay that way. Because with over 400,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep anything on the road. She may not be pretty, but she's all yours. That's Napa know-how. Blog Talk Radio. Well, good evening, folks. And thank you for tuning in with me once again to another edition of True Conservative Radio. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. I can see right offhand we have a variety of different listeners already listening live to the program, and I want to thank you for your patronage. Uh, It has been some time since I conducted a broadcast. You have to excuse me, folks. I am still uh, trying to get rid of the last remnants of the damn flu, which is ridiculous out here. Uh, it that really doesn't make a difference whether you, you get a flu shot or you don't get a flu shot. You're still going to take it up the tailpipe when it comes to you know catching something from some infectious doorknob or some infectious you know uh, stair railing or something of that nature. Uh, you know, inev- it's inevitable if you leave your home, you're going to get sick, and it's unfortunate. The only thing you can do is just uh, take the necessary precautions and, uh, you know, drink all your fluids and all that crap. But uh, anyway, folks, I want to thank you for tuning in with me. There's a lot of subject matters that we're going to discuss on this evening's program. If you want to tune in and uh, – actually, excuse me, if you want to participate in the debate and the discourse that is happening on the program, please call in at 646 646- Six five two four eight six nine is the number to call here. Uh, we're going to be talking about a variety of different subject matters, folks. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and dive right in to the AIG Liddy testimony. The CEO, you know, uh, what's this idiot's name? I know his last name is Liddy. Uh, Edward Liddy, that's what this fruity bastard's name is. Anyway, Edward Liddy, who happens to be the CEO of AIG, he basically took the job of uh, AIG CEO six months ago. He came out of retirement, so to speak. He tried to show some sort of valiancy by saying, I am only going to accept a dollar a year in salary, as that, as that was some sort of justification to give all the hundred, what is it, $65 million in bonuses of taxpayers' money to the imbeciles that actually ran this ridiculous, grotesque scheme of economic fuzzy math. Uh, anyway, he was in front of the Congress or the Senate, uh, or excuse me, the, yeah, some congressional committee today. I mean, he was completely getting grilled. And, there, you know, I find it rather funny that, uh, you know, what, what, this news about this AIG uh, $165 billion, $160-something billion dollar bonus to these uh, uh, executive nimrods, I mean, this is just very recent news, folks. And all of a sudden, Congress, you know, ships this guy over here for testimony and put this guy in front of some sort of theatrical spectacle that the media captures. And you notice that most of the Democrats were hounding this poor man. Now, look, I'm not going to make any excuses for Edward Liddy. I don't know the man. I mean, he's trying to make some sort of public relations effort and trying to say that he's only going to accept a dollar a year in salary, as if that's some sort of a justification for what, you know, whatever the blue hell AIG is doing right now. And that's exactly what he was doing. He was trying to justify it in the face of Congress, in the face of the American people. And I don't know if you people were, or had the time or actually gave two rats, actions, or rats asses excuse me, about actually listening to this Nimrod's testimony, but it was splitting hairs 101. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this guy went to a four-day seminar at Slick Willie Bill Clinton's lion session. He was splitting hairs like it was going out of style. It was ridiculous. I mean, but at the same time, the hypocrisy, folks. You've got to listen and you've got to think. The hypocrisy. The Democrats and the liberals are the ones that are in power right now. And they're the ones that justified all these bailouts. Now, of course, the Democrats, in their questioning of old Edward Liddy, 
they were alluding to the fact that, well, a lot of this decision-making that you're doing right now, a lot of these bonuses that are going into the 160-something billion dollars, or billion, a million, not billion, that would be ridiculous if they were getting 165 billion, <laughs> but 165 million dollars in bonuses to executives in branches of AIG that failed, that went bankrupt, that went belly up. I mean, these executives are the reason that we're giving these people our tax-paying dollars. And the Democrats tried to question CEO AIG man Edward Liddy by saying, well, is it not correct that you actually voted on this particular bonus issue uh, during the last bailout previous to this administration? And, of course, the AIG man, he was like, oh, yes, that's exactly right. Uh, we, uh, uh, we actually voted on this. The board voted on this uh, back in November of some sort. Uh, these bonuses are contractually obligated, which means that, uh, you know, and, and according to Edward Liddy's and, uh, and AIG's philosophy and their uh, legal interpretation, they feel that they are contractually obligated to pay these Nimrods 160 something million dollars in bonuses for heaven's sake. And the Democrats were trying to, you know, I mean, you had that stupid Barney Fruit, I mean, Barney Frank, whatever his fruity name is, you had him out there with his gums and no teeth or whatever his problem is saying, uh, you know, I think I know what the problem is. You gotta give us the. I mean, he was just, you know, chomping at his mouth out there. I mean, you would have thought that. You know, he saw a naked picture of Ricky Martin's butt crack or something. This guy was flapping his gums in the wind. But he was sitting here trying to use these executives, and, and, and he was alluding to the fact that he wanted a list, and he wanted names named of the executives that accepted the so-called $165 million worth of bonuses. And, of course, the CEO backed up his employees and said, well... I can't give out the names. And the reason I can't give out the names is because we're getting death threats. They're threatening to burn down our houses. They're threatening to kidnap our kids. I mean, we've got public outcry out here and all this ridiculous nonsense. Now, folks, the reason I'm bringing all this up is because the reason that the Democrats are trying to throw mud at AIG at this point is because the Democrats gave them the opportunity to give them our taxpaying dollars to a bunch of executives that caused the debacle at that company. That's what makes me sick. That's what makes me sick to my stomach. You know, they're actually going to give these people bonuses. I mean, you know, when you get a bonus in a job, it's because you did a job well done, not because you tanked the damn job down the tubes, you made it bankrupt, you made it nullified, you made it a piece of garbage. But unfortunately, folks, according to AIG and Edward Liddy, he says that the AIG is contractually obligated to give these people $165 million in bonuses. They have to do it. It's in the contract. And you had a couple of, you know, semi-rational congressmen trying to allude to the CEO and said, hey, look, we gave you uh, uh, close to $100-something billion, dollars, billion the taxpayers give, they gave this company a hundred and some odd billion, I think it's $170 billion to supposedly prop up this ridiculous institution back into supposed profitability or just breaking even. And yet uh, you insist on, you know, giving these Nimrods 160 something million dollars in bonuses. And, you know, a lot of these congressmen couldn't understand it. And, folks, it's not for you to understand. This is. Uh, business as usual. This is cronies paying off cronies, and let me explain why. There was run one Republican. I'm not going to name his name because then that would allude to the fact that I'm backing this piece of crap up for any for some sort of office or giving him some sort of political legitimacy when none of these scumbags in Washington deserve any political legitimacy because they've sold us out. But he alluded to the fact that well, since this supposed uh, 160 something million dollars in executive AIG bonuses was voted in the last quarter, which meant uh, previous to January 1st of this year, that was last the, the fourth quarter of 08. 
then, uh, you know, uh, according to uh, the AIG man, that's what made him uh, finance or contractually responsible for the payments. So the, the congressman said, well, that meant that the board of directors had to vote on this particular issue of giving these bonuses. Is that correct? And, you know, uh, of course, the uh, Edward Liddy said, of course, that's correct. Well, lo and behold, folks, that the Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve actually held a, a, a good portion, a good stake in the company of AIG at the time. And what the hell does that mean? That means that there were actually representatives or some unknown person from the Federal Reserve, or at least representing the Federal Reserve, there at these board meetings at AIG. And this is testimony by Edward Liddy, the AIG CEO. He admitted this crap. All right? And he said that there is, uh, you know, people from the Federal Reserve, given the fact that they have a, a, a substantial financial uh, interest in AIG, uh, you know, apparently, like I said or alluded to before, the Federal Reserve invested a good chunk of their cash into this uh, – uh, AIG nonsense. So they have some somebody, some representative from the Federal Reserve, somebody out there at these board meetings. And according to this congressman, and if you want to go look up the, the testimony, if you want to re-see it for yourself, go to C-SPAN and take a look at the testimony of Edward Liddy. It was fascinating testimony. It, it is Liars 101. Uh, you know, if you want to get lying to the to the if you want to if you want to see a class act. A uh, uh, simulated theatrical session of lying. I, I strongly advise you to watch the testimony of Edward Liddy and the Congress out here. But anyway, back to the Federal Reserve's interest in AIG. All right, uh, AIG. Uh, the, you know, once again, they alluded to the fact that they voted on these bonuses in uh, the fourth quarter of '08, and that's why they had to pay these supposed executives these uh, big-time bonuses, $165 million in bonuses this year, okay? Now, the, th the problem is, is that AIG, its headquarters, is in New York City. So that would mean that representatives or somebody representing, so somebody representing the Federal Reserve of New York would have had to have been at these supposed board meetings about AIG's finances, about AIG's uh, bonuses, and a all the decision making that's made by the board. And if you don't know what, you know how the corporations are set up, I strongly advise you to go out there and read about it. So let's get this straight, folks. All right, run this in your head and, and have some synapses spark in that damn noggin of yours. All right, listen to me again, AIG. The CEO said today that uh, that representatives of the Federal Reserve, somebody from the Federal Reserve, was at the board meetings at all times when they were voting in all this crap. Now, that representative of the Federal Reserve would have had to come from the New York branch of the Federal Reserve. And who was the head of the New York branch of the Federal Reserve at that time? Well, none other than Tim the Money Elf Geithner. That's right, folks. That is right. We got Tim Geithner somehow related to this AIG nonsense. Now, that, that sparks a very interesting question. We're seeing a lot of uh, horrific nonsense happening because of this AIG debacle. Uh, you know, we that's why we're giving them our taxpaying dollars, folks, because they hold a lot of assets that, uh, according to the federal government, or according to this administration, according to this, these liberals and these feminists in power, that if we just let AIG fall, uh, you know, you're going to have speculators from, you know, foreign speculators come in and eat up all those assets that AIG holds. It's a very complicated bureaucratic corporate conglomerate story, folks. I, I really wish I could dedicate the whole program to this crap, but it would bore the bejesus out of you. All right? I mean, it, literally, you know, if I sat here and tried to tell you about every integral tentacle of the bureaucratic process of this nonsense, it would literally be like you sitting at a damn insurance convention, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure y'all would rather watch flies screw 
than to sit here and listen to me dissect the bureaucratic systems of corporate and insurance America and all this other nonsense. All right? But the thing is, all right, the thing is, is that Tim Geithner is somehow related, or I mean, uh, he somehow knew or had to know. He had to know about the AIG debacle. And this is pre-January 1st. This, this goes back to the first financial bailout. Remember that? Remember when John Turncoat McCain and, and old Barack Obama, you know, called off their campaigns and went into Washington like a, like a team of mavericks? <laughs> and they came in there and they said, oh, we're going to clean house. We're going to get things done. And, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're going we're gonna to make America right. And, you know, all this nonsense. And what did they do? They went in this first financial bailout, the bank bailout. This was in November. Remember that, folks? I know that there's been a lot of giving away of our taxpaying dollars, but this goes back during that time. <laughs> All right? And, and, and you see, this is what's unfortunate. You know, we gave AIG money during that particular time. And AIG said, well, you give us this cash, well, we should be all right. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll pay you back in due time, but we'll be okay. Everything's going to be all right. And lo and behold, January comes around. They say, oh, we're about to go bankrupt again. And, you know, we, we have Geithner and, you know, the, the money elf Geithner, and we got the Obama administration just throwing money at anybody who's, who cries loud enough, who, who says that they'll, you know, topple if they don't get any kind of bailout money. I think this is sick. This is sick, folks, and this is why you have today uh, a congressman, uh, a representative, uh, Florida Republican Representative Connie Mack called for Tim Geithner to lose his job uh, today. Uh, he's the first Capitol Hill lawmaker to say, you know, hey, Geithner, get the hell out of here. We got some other uh, guy, Daryl Issa, or Issa, Republican of California. He's also joining the call, but... Uh, folks, we as the American people, we don't need to wait for these bureaucrats to start calling for Tim Geithner to get the hell out of here. I think that we as the American people need to call for Tim Geithner to get the hell out of here. All right? I mean, I was disgusted right when this whole administration started implementing these so-called socialists. And they're not even uh, real socialists, but quasi-socialist communist programs out here. I think that we as the American people need to start understanding that we need to get up off our fat jelly asses, all right? Put the freaking fork down for about five minutes, all right? Get our fat asses off the couch, turn off the boob tube, and we need to start participating in our governments. Now, how do we do that, folks? Well, it's very simple, folks. The ballot box. Go out there and vote. Go out there and try to converse with other people. I know that in this new text messaging era, this new email generation, this new uh, technological Internet age, nobody wants to talk face-to-face -face with each other anymore. Hell, we don't even answer our phones anymore. We have cell phones on us all the damn time, and we still don't answer them. Now, we, we don't want to talk to anybody anymore, folks, but let me tell you, we need to get our asses off. Uh, and we need to stop thinking like that, folks. We need to go out and start talking to people, even if we get people mad, even if we get people upset. We have to start letting people know that they need to stop watching the boob tube and watching, Oh, look at the American Idol. Oh, she's so great. Oh, look at that fruity bastard thing. You need to put the boob tube down with that garbage, and you need to participate in your government. I've been saying this for two years, folks. All the... Actions that have transpired in America today have not surprised me, because I've said it all along, folks. I knew this was going to happen. You have an infestation of liberalism and feminism that have infested the minds of America. And before I get off the Geithner situation, I want everyone, please, if you don't believe me, Look at what has happened to the American economy. Why don't you read what these so-called stimulus bills, these bailout bills and uh, economic growth bills, ominous bill, and all this crap, all this raid on the American taxpaying system. I want you to read it for yourself. Go to taxpayer.net. It's all one word, folks, and I'm not promoting this website because, uh, you know, they paid me or I'm getting some sort of an incentive. Folks, it is information that your ass needs to know. 
Taxpayer.net. Go out there and look at how they're spending our taxpaying dollars. Every time you go to work, every time you sweat, every time you go home tired, every time you have to initiate more energy that you know you barely have within yourself, and you collect that paycheck after all that, and you see the taxes that are taken out of your check. That's the money that's being given away to AIG. That's the money that's being given away for uh, one point, what was it, one point seven million dollars to research pig odor, thirty million dollars to save a rat in San Francisco. This is where it's going. It's your money, you piece of crap. And that's why I'm so critical. That's why I get, you know, sometimes a little vulgar. That's why I, sometimes I get a little, uh, you know, scolding, scathing about the American public. Because, and folks, with all due respect, the American public sucks. The American public allowed this to happen. They're allowing it to happen now. They're on their knees begging for their own quasi-socialism and communism. And I had somebody come into the chat room before the uh, show even started uh, saying that he, he doesn't understand how America can be so dumb. Well, folks, it's very simple. I'll tell you why people are so dumb. I'll tell you why people are begging for their own quasi-communism socialism. It's very simple. Everybody in America screwed up, folks. They screwed up. And what do I mean by that? I mean they, they got in over their head. Uh, they started having children... Uh, before they even understood how to maintain those children, raise those children, properly clothe, feed, and house those children. You know, they decided to go out and keep up with the Joneses out here. They decided to go out and bling, bling, and get $4,000 plasma screen TVs and $50,000 houses, or $250,000 houses. (laughs) $50,000 houses sounds like what you can get right now if you got some cash in your pocket. They went out and got the damn $60,000 cars. This is what they got. They, they tried to keep up with the Joneses, and every, I shouldn't say every, but most families, most people, most individuals in America were out here basically accumulating enough debt that they had to make a minimum amount of money each month. You know, I talked to one uh, lady the other day, and she expected sympathy from me or something. I, I mean, I almost laughed in her face. Uh, but she was telling me that she had to make 6500 each month to maintain her lifestyle. Oh, oh, I have to I have to go out and work. Me and my husband have to work two, three jobs apiece because we have to maintain sixty five hundred a month, you know, so we can maintain our house, our car, our job, our or this, or that. Hey, that's tough titty, all right folks. That was your individual choice. And this is where we're getting away from, folks. People don't want to face up to the fact that they screwed up. That's the problem. People don't want to face up to the fact that they uh, that, that it just they screwed up. I mean, and now that all the debt and all the burdens and all the the crap and all the whirlwind and all the debt collectors and all the people are trying to come up and crawl up their anal passage. And we're in an employment landscape where there's not too many jobs anymore if you happen to lost your job. And, folks, I called this two years ago. I called this economic debacle two years ago. If you don't believe me, look back in the archive. These shows are timed, dated, and stamped. And I'm glad they are because when some, historic, some historian uh, 50, 100 years from now looks back at the record, at least my voice will be here saying, look, You need to stop going out there and keeping up with the Joneses and start realizing that we need to take some sort of responsibility of being a true American citizen and participating in your government. And, folks, I'm going to continue to say that, but I'm going to be completely candid with you. I'm going to be completely honest with you, all right? I'm going to be honest. I I think we're too far gone. I think we're too far gone. I mean, just look at the landscape of America, folks. Look at the landscape of America. And let me just go ahead and forget about Tim Geithner. Hey, folks, he's bad for America. Look at what he's done. He's turned himself into the people's hedge fund manager. You know, I mean, instead of actually going out there and investing the American people's money back in the American people, he's giving it right back to Wall Street and all these CEOs and all these cronies, and he knows it. 
So all I'm saying, folks, is if you're a true American, call your congressman and tell him to get Tim Geithner the hell out of here. Get him out. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, segue into something else. And this is what I've been talking about, folks. All right? This is why America has submitted to this infestation of liberalism and feminism. Not only have they screwed up because they have taken on on their plate more than they can handle, you know, they, they've accumulated, you know, so much debt that they have to make five or 6000 a month just to maintain their lifestyle, just to maintain their sustenance, just to maintain the payments on things that they think that they own when they really don't. But, folks, another thing, and I've been saying this also for two years, morality, folks, morality, and the liberal and feminist notion of morality implemented on America. Folks, I have said this time and time again, liberalism and feminism is evil. It's evil, folks, and just look at what it has done to our society. Look at what it's done to our society, for, for heaven's sake. You've got uh, liberals out here. They are not going to be happy until there's oral copulation between two men across the street from an elementary school. All right? I'm telling you, that's the final stage before these liberals finally say, oh, yeah, um, we're in power now. Oh, yes, we're in power. Because, folks, I have been saying this. As a matter of fact, my first show on the Internet was about feminism, and you know I'm a proud anti-feminist. I'm a proud anti-liberal. But, folks, not only is Octomom the culmination of the feminist and liberal movement and its uh, attempts at socially engineering America. But, folks, here is the documented proof that feminism and liberalism have trivialized life, they have trivialized marriage, and they have trivialized the family. Uh, you know, via the mainstream media, via, you know, these... Uh, liberal Hollywood, liberal media companies that are implementing the power of suggestion to our young people, to people of our age. Uh, you've got liberal and feminist Hollywood, all right, uh, you know, suggesting to us that, oh, you know what, it's okay to go out and be some philanderous housewife, huh? Oh, it's okay to be some philanderous slut bag because, hey, that's woman liberation, right? That's what Gloria Steinem said. Gloria Steinem said, hey, if I want to go out and have about five or six children from five or six different fathers, that's woman liberation. If I want to go out and be some philanderous slut that hops around from penis to penis to penis, well, that's woman liberation. Uh, if I want to go out and have about five or six, seven, eight, twelve different divorces, that's woman liberation. And, you know, folks, I've been on this program saying that for two years, and everybody, you know, from... Uh, liberals to so-called Republicans and so-called conservatives have sat here and called me and, and, and called me slanderous lies. Uh, they have spread, you know, just insults and, and, and personal attacks, other methods of agitation. I have had death threats. I have had all kinds of malarkey mail being emailed to me. But, folks, I made this call. And, folks, the glorification of Octomom should just go to show you this. But let me tell you, something just came out. That's right. U.S. births break the record of the 50s baby boom, folks. Welcome to the new America. I talk about this on my blog, by the way. You can get to my blog at ghostpolitics.blogspot.com. That's right. In 2007, folks, we have broken the record of the 1950s babies boom. Huh? The baby boomers are now, they have now been defeated. There have now been more babies born within the past year than at any other time in history. And I know that folks are going to sit here and say, oh, yeah, that's so beautiful. Oh, yeah, I mean, we got so much life growing up everywhere. Uh, idiots. Uh, it, it, it just says right here in the report, and, and I, I, I want to dispute this, but I'll get to that in a second. It says 40% of the new U.S. births. 40% of births are out of wedlock. 
That's right, folks. The new baby boom is no longer about mom and dad finally trying to settle in on their new home and trying to raise a family and, and do that sort of thing. No, 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 no. We're in the new socially engineered liberal and feminist society where single parents are now the majority of the day, where it's okay to go out and be some philanderous whorebag and have five or six different children from five or six different fathers. Folks, we have an entitlement system that makes baby-making into big business, all right? I mean, that's what it is. I mean, th these people have turned baby-making into big business. And if you don't believe me, go take a look at how many government subsidies Octomom is getting. And at the same time, you've got these people out here that are giving her all kinds of crap. She got herself a brand-new house. Uh, she was seen the other day getting a $1,000 worth of all kinds of garbage at some high-end retail store. She's living large now. She's selling her rights to her story to anybody who wants to throw some money at her, like some cheap, cheap sleaze bag stripper at some hump hump bar down in Guatemala or some crap. I mean, but this is America, right? This is woman liberation. You have the liberal and feminist media trying to assert to us that, oh, we shouldn't be so hard on, on Octomom. We shouldn't be so hard on Octomom. It's ridiculous, folks. It's absolutely, unbelievably ridiculous and sick. And I want to I say something else. I've been saying this from day one, folks, that, you know, we needed some morality back in America. But at this point, I mean, morality is probably the last thing we need to worry about. We need to worry about preserving America in general. But, folks, it is no coincidence that single-parent families are the majority of the day, that we have a 1950s baby boom like we've never seen before, all right? We have surpassed the 1950s baby boom. And you've got these liberals and these feminists happy about it. They're happy that there's single parents out here. They're happy that there's all kinds of abortions happening every weekend. So uh, some stupid ditzy bimbo can go to the club next week. It's ridiculous. It's sick. We have turned baby making into big business, folks. This is not a joke. If you have five, six different children from five or six different fathers... Folks, you're going to get about five or $6,000 a month in government entitlements, for heaven's sake. I mean, we've trivialized life, damn it. And it's these liberals, it's these feminists, and if you have fallen victim to this ideological crap, then you're a piece of crap. You're one of these people that hate America, that don't want the Constitution, that's begging for your own socialism, that's begging for your own communism, and it makes me sick. It makes Crap! What have we become? I just don't understand it. I just don't understand what in the blue hell we have become. And we're championing this crap. We're championing this. Oh, look, it's just a new evolve in America. It's a change in America. Change in America? Change in America. Single parent families are the majority of the day, and that's change in America. We've got women believing that they can just go out and shit out about five or six different children from five or six different fathers, but that's a change in America. I tell you, folks, this is really disgusting, and it saddens me. It sickens me. It burns a hole in the pit of my stomach, for heaven's sake, that I have to sit here and witness this new America that we're living in here. And people are dumbfounded. People are begging for it. That's what makes me sick about it. I mean, that's what makes me utterly sick about it. I guarantee you that you're going to have all these Nimrods calling me up, or they're going to email my email address and the whole nine yards saying, Oh, ghost. Why are you so hard on single mothers? They got it hard. I mean, so what if they get $5,000 in government subsidies and a couple of other thousand dollars in, in child support? But who cares? I care, damn it. I care, you stupid piece of crap, because who's raising these children? 
who's raising these children while mom's going out, you know, to the club or, you know, going out on her merry way to go out and try to become some, I mean, who the hell knows? I mean, I think it's rather funny that these women can continue to work and continue to collect entitlements and continue to collect child support. Uh, you know, and I, I just think it's funny that, that they continue to play this sympathy role of, oh, I'm the victim. I'm the victim. Help me. I'm the victim. Uh, you, you get no sympathy from me. And, and I said that in my blog, folks. And I strongly advise you to go check it out. All right? Uh, ghostpolitics.blogspot.com. You get no sympathy from me. All you single mothers that are out there. That are out there saying, oh, it's so hard, I, I can't get by, I shit it out about four or five kids, I can't get by. You get no sympathy from me! You know who I care about? You know who I'm concerned for? The American people! The American people that did things the right way! That raised their families! That pay their taxes! That don't break the law! That have never collected an entitlement in their life! That's who I'm concerned about, the true Americans, the people that love the Constitution. That's who I care about. I'm not going to give any sympathy to some stupid loser who doesn't give a crap about themselves. They have no integrity. They have no type of pride to close their legs or to have children when they are financially responsible, when they can properly feed those children, they can properly close those children, they can probably house those children. You single parents get no sympathy from me, you piece of crap. But if you happen to be one of these single parents that lost your spouse due to natural death or natural causes, I'm excluding you from this rant. I'm talking about these stupid, materialistic, decadent, philanderous pieces of trash that decided to break the sanctity of marriage because they decided, oh, I want to hop on something that looks good in a leather jacket. Oh, I want to hop on something that looks good down the street or something as ridiculous as that. I just, I just can't believe it, folks. I, sometimes I just get speechless. Sometimes I just get jaded. And I've got a couple of liberals in this damn chat room flapping their fat Cheeto-stained fingers on the keyboard, talking garbage about yours truly. You know, trying to talk garbage about Republicans. I'm not a Republican, you piece of crap. I'm not a liberal, you piece of crap. I'm not a Democrat, you piece of crap. I'm a conservative, damn it! I'm a conservative! I'm not some ass clown who's going to sit here and tickle his ass crack and think that everything's okay just because of party loyalty out here. I care about America. I care about the Constitution. That's my party, all right? That's what I care about. I'm sick of this garbage. I'm sick of what America has become. Are you? Are you? I mean, I'm sitting here reading it, folks, and you can look for yourself. The United States births, as of right now, has surpassed the baby boom of the 1950s. And, folks, that is a serious subject matter. That is something serious that we need to talk about. We need to talk about this type of malarkey. I mean, I can't palate that single-parent families are now the majority of the day. I can't palate this crap, folks. And then we wonder why our children are, are turning out to be a bunch of screwed-up nimrods out here. And then we wonder why we have a whole bunch of 20-somethings going up into public places and shooting people up, shooting themselves, uh, you know, uh, participating in all kinds of psychotic episodes. Folks, the reason is, is because the parents weren't there to facilitate a good upbringing for that child. And who was there to bring up the child? Well, the liberal and feminist media, the liberal and feminist Hollywood, the liberal and feminist music industry. This is what raised your child. This is what put in these suggested thoughts into your young one's head while you were going out doing whatever in the blue hell you're doing when you should have been raising your children. And that's all there is to it, folks. I spit on any, any of this crap. And, and you know what? Uh, let me go ahead and uh, 
put a little bit of a side note on this whole single parent issue. Uh, folks, everyone knew that I was completely against John McCain during the presidential elections because I knew he was a liberal piece of trash. And as a result, when Sarah Eskimo Bimbo Palin came into the picture and decided to show her ugly Eskimo mug and decided to call herself the new mouthpiece of conservatism, I was out here outraged. And I was even more outraged, folks, when I saw the Republican Party justifying teen pregnancy just because Sarah Palin's daughter got knocked up by something that looks good in a hockey stick. It's ridiculous, folks. Well, lo and behold, old Bristol Palin and, you know, whoever in the hell her boyfriend or her husband or whatever they wanted to call that piece of white trash, whatever they wanted to call him, all right, uh, they broke up. They're no longer going to be together. So, aww, aww. Folks, I told you that this was a deliberate attempt. Both of these candidates, McCain and Sarah Palin, were deliberate attempts at the feminists and liberals who have hijacked the Republican Party to deface conservatism, to deface the Republican Party itself, to nullify it. I mean, look at the Republican Party now. It's in shambles, for heaven's sake. You got that stupid cue ball Michael Steele with his bald head sitting here trying to deface Rush Limbaugh, for heaven's sake. Trying to turn his face on his own party, for heaven's sake. Trying to convert Republicans into a bunch of bedwetting, long-haired liberals. And they accomplished it, folks. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished, folks. And I can't believe I'm living through this crap. I mean, I can't believe that this is really America. I can't believe it. I mean, sometimes I just want to. I I I just I just I just I just want to stop. I just want to crawl in a hole and just 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 have people leave me alone. Sometimes when I walk outside my door and see all the sour scowls on everybody's faces, everybody's living unhappy and pathetic lives, and they want to blame somebody else for it. It's your fault, you stupid idiot. It's your fault for not participating in your government. It's your fault for allowing these multinational corporations to take control of this government and allow them to pass legislation that allowed the means of production to be shipped out of America. It's your fault, the American people. And that's why I always say that the American public sucks. Because it does, folks. The American people have lost their sense of what the Constitution is, what it was meant for, what it stands for. You people have lost it, folks. And that's why, I, I mean, I strongly urge everyone who listens to my show, whether you agree or disagree with me, participate in your government. Read up on the subject matters. All, both parties, Republican and Democrat, they're a bunch of lying scoundrels. All right? They have sold us out. They'll tell us one thing and do something else. All right? I am saying, folks, we need some sort of American political renaissance. I know that sounds a little fruity, but, hey, we need an American political renaissance that's going to force everybody. It's going to force them all to go out there and vote in those ballot boxes. And what are you going to do? What should you do? Well, first and foremost, folks, if you're a, a, a law-abiding citizen, if you're an American that has a family that pays your taxes, I urge you to go out and run for some sort of public office. Folks, you can run for anything. You can run for anything on your local level, on your state level, on the federal level. Go out and run for something. And secondly, if you're not going to run for anything, organize. Organize people. Organize people around a, a, a specific subject matter. All right? You know, organize people and make yourself a force at the ballot box because that's the only way that these damn politicians are going to listen to you over the people that are donating into their campaigns. I mean, folks, you want to know why that uh, AIG got all these damn bailouts even post the November financial bailout? It's because, well, it's no coincidence that Barack Obama was given over 100 something thousand dollars in campaign contributions by AIG, folks. <laughs> all right, folks, this is, this, what have I told you? I mean, all you idiots during the uh, uh, 
uh, campaign, all you morons that were calling up saying, oh, it's, it's Barack Obama's the savior. He's great. He's going to save America. He's going to pay my mortgage. He's going to pay my car. Uh, you know, oh, where are you assholes now, with all due respect? Where are you stupid jerk nuts now? I don't hear any Barack Obama supporter around here any longer, haven't you? I mean, I'd like a Barack Obama supporter right now. Give me a damn call. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. You give me a damn call and you tell me why Barack Obama is such a great president out here. I mean, he's converted uh, America into some sort of quasi-communist socialist nonsense. I want you to call up and tell me some substance. Don't tell me, uh, uh, yes, we can. Yes, we can. And we're going to we're gonna affect change. And change is such, a, is such a good guy. It's ridiculous. All right? And, and give, me a, give me a damn call right now. All right? Give me a damn call. All you Barack Obama supporters that are sitting here uh, sticking a, a, a couple of fingers up your shit funnel, Tickling your ass cracks, thinking that, oh, Obama's such a great guy. Please give me a call, and we'll have some civil discourse on why or why he isn't. All right, give me a call, 646-652-486. Now, we're going we're to take some callers here. Uh, 1111, you're on the air. Hello? Hello? Well, well we're going to hang you up. Anyway, uh, six four seven, you're on the air. Area code six four seven. Hello. Hello. Hi. How's it going? Good. What's doing? What are, where are you in the crapper or something? What's going on over there? Uh, I'm coming. I thought it takes you long enough to answer the damn phone. Grumpy poop. How's it going? Are you, are you talking to me? No. Hi. What's the, what's the, what's going on here? Are you, are you for Barack Obama or something? You think it's he's the greatest thing since sliced bread? What's going on here? God, do you know who I am? I'm the one that calls all the time from Canada that you always make fun of. I told you, remember I said that I need you for the old yeah, because your yap is great and yeah, you got the right conviction, but you're wasting your time on a bunch of bullshit. What's your point? The point is, why are you wasting your time on something that's going down fast? Oh, hold on, hold on. L let me go ahead and hang your stupid idiot ass up and let me explain to you why, okay? First and foremost, lady, or man, or she-male, or shim, whatever you are, uh, you're from Canada, all right? And with all due respect for my Canadian bacon friends, uh, why don't you go piss off and worry about your own socialistic crap that you have up there, you maple leaf worshiping piece of garbage? You know, I'm really sick of these damn Canadian bacon pieces of moose hump and crap calling up my show and having some sort of opinion about America. That's, that's what really pisses me off. You know, they have some sort of opinion about America over here. And yet, what, what makes me sick... What makes me sick is that right after 9-11, folks, and I remember this very vividly. I will never forget this. After 9-11, this was like seven or eight days, they had some sort of uh, national hockey game, NHL game in Canada. And uh, they had an American team up there in Canada. And, uh, you know, uh, when you're in another person's country, you rise for both people's national anthems, right? So they had the Canadian Bacon National Anthem, and, of course, everybody rose and, you know, played with their nads or whatever they do during the Canadian National Anthem. And then you had the American National Anthem. Now, mind you, this was eight days after, seven or eight days after 9-11. Uh, <laughs> these stupid Canadian Bacon pieces of Tom Green one ball loving pieces of garbage started booing the American national anthem and booing the American flag as it was being hoisted and as the American uh, national anthem was being sung eight days after 9-11. They booed us for heaven's sake, folks. They booed it. And I thought that was really disgusting. That was disgusting, and it makes me sick, and that's why I will never forgive you Canadian bacon pieces of Canuck crap. 
All right, well, I'll do respect. I'm never going to forget that crap. And you know what makes me even more sick is that these socialistic French frog Canadian bacon butt lovers over here can talk all the crap they want behind the backs of America. Isn't that right? They can talk about, bad about any country. They can have any kind of opinion they want to on international affairs because they know no one's going to hit their asses up because of America. Well, you know what, you Canadian bacon crap, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at that. I don't want to completely bash Canadians. Not that I don't have any Canadian friends or anything of that nature. It just makes me sick when I hear Canadians have some sort of an opinion about American politics when they're living in modern-day socialism, for heaven's sake. <laughs> I mean, it makes me sick. All right? I mean, that's all I'm saying. I don't like Canadians, all right? That's all there is to it. You booed the American National Anthem. I'm a true American. I love America. I love this country. But I'm not going to sit here and have some stupid Canadian bacon, uh, Celine Dion worshiping piece of maple leaf up the ass having trash sit here and try to badmouth my country when you don't even live here, when you're not even participating in the political system here, when you, are, you yourself are, are submitting to some sort of Fabian socialist crap. So just sit there and shut your mouth. All right? That's all there is to it. Anyway. Enough of the damn Canadian crap. I mean, the, the, the point is here is that we need, uh, you know, more Americans to start getting off their fat asses, all right? I know everybody is trying to hide behind makeup and going to the club and going out to the movies and living in Hollywood and living in La La Land and taking all kinds of brain drugs and taking all kinds of boner pills and partying like it's 1999 and all this crap. But, folks, you need to be adults about this crap. All right, you need to start participating in this government, and I'm saying it, and I will continue to say it. All right, the American public sucks. You allowed this crap to happen, and the only way we're going to do anything about it is if we go and participate in this government. Anyway, six four six six five two four eight six nine. We got some more callers here. One 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 one. You're on the air. Hello. Stop playing with your Peter Popper. I can hear you. What, what, what do you what, what do you want? This is stupid. Look, we got deaf mute. What is this deaf mute hour or something? Huh? Hey, what, what am I saying? Hey, if you're a deaf mute, please give me a call six four six six five two four eight six nine. Am I saying that or some crap? Anyway, let's go to another call. One 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 one. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Yeah. How? What's going on? Hey, how are you? I, I didn't want to be called. I just wanted to hear your show. I oh, you wanted to? My computer right now. You can't hear yeah, from the it's... PC? Right. Well, it's buffering right now. I left a message in the chat room that I was going to call just to listen to the show. All right. Well, I'll put you back on mute then. Thank you for listening, all right? Thanks. All right. We're going to put them back on mute here. we got a couple of people just listening to the show. I think the Canadian is calling back. What, 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 what do you want? What do you, The Canadian, what do you want? Listen, you... you I don't know. You get all like fucking uptight about stuff. You got an opinion because you think you're somebody, and you know you're wasting your time because the whole system is gonna fall. And I don't care if I'm Canadian. It's called, you know what? You guys are being run by a communist system, and you know you have no clue. Uh, I've been saying that for two years, you Nimrod, that we've been <laughs> yeah, going into communism. I'm all Canadian, but yeah, oh, I got no say in nothing, bacon and this and that. You know what? Who are you? You have no. It's because of hey, me. I'm a conservative, you, damn it. I'm, I'm a conservative. I'm fucking God, so what are you going to do? What did you say? You heard me. What did you say? I said I'm God. You, you, you said you're God, but it sounds like you're right next to a damn oxygen machine. What do you have, emphysema? You smoke That's too much okay. cigars? Shmo you smoke too much cigars? Yeah, you know, hang, hang, hang this stupid Canadian piece of crap up, please. Get her off! That stupid old hag sounds about 40 years worth of booze and, uh, you know, three packs of camels a day. Get her off. It's ridiculous here, folks. I mean, but you see, this is the type of discourse that you have out here. 
You know, these pro-socialist, pro-communist, left-wing liberal, long hair feminist pieces of garbage. This is what you have. They'll call up. They'll try to agitate. They'll be like, oh, ghost, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Shut your mouth. I mean, give me a break, all right? I mean, I just don't understand it here. I, I Look, and you see, I've got people in my chat room that are sitting here saying, Oh, I can't believe he's talking that way. Uh, how can you talk that way? Hey, I love America, you idiots. Don't you understand that? All right? I believe in America. I believe in the Constitution. I'm a conservative, damn it. And I've lived the conservative lifestyle all my life. And to see and witness this uh, infestation of liberalization, feminization, pussification implemented in this modern day and age, it makes me sick. I mean, I'm dumbfounded. I'm bamboozled. I can't believe it. I mean, what the hell has happened to America out here? I mean, do you care about your freedom? Do you care about the Constitution? Do you care that the American taxpaying system is being raided? You stupid idiots! Do you care about anything besides Paris Hilton's latest rodent on a rotten crotch? Or, oh, Britney Spears is shit at another kid again. Or, oh, Lindsay Lohan wrapped her car around another telephone pole because she's a ditzy, drunk whorebag. Oh, I mean, won't you start caring about this country? Start caring about the Constitution? Because if this country falls, it's your fault. If this country dies, it's your fault. If this country ends, it's your fault. It's your fault, you gracious damn crap. It's your fault. It'll be your fault. And I know once again, folks, I know that I'm breathing hard, and I know that I'm... I'm breathing heavy. I got a high blood pressure problem. I know that I could probably drop dead at any minute, but you know what, folks? I don't care. I don't care. I care about this country too damn much, folks. All right? I care about this country too damn much to sit here and go quietly into that good night. How about you? Are you just going to sit back? And watch the unfolding, watch the unraveling, watch the communization of our country on the boob, too? Are you going to do something about it? Are you going to participate in this government? Or are you just going to be like everybody else? You're going to be like all these other ass clowns out here, tickling your ass crack, saying, Oh, it'll be okay. America will bounce back. I don't have to do crap. It's ridiculous, folks. Anyway, folks, 646-652-4869. I can see that we have the damn Canadian calling back. All right, I mean, you know, we got this damn Canadian calling back. I don't want to talk to a Canadian. Anyway, let me let me let me let me catch my breath here, folks. Let me go ahead and lay down on my couch. And I know, folks, I know that I'm I'm breathing hard here. I know that I'm <laughs> I know that I'm coughing up a lung here. But folks, I mean, and this is a candid little interview. From me to you. I really care about this country, damn it. I've lived the conservative lifestyle all my life. I I have raised children. I have grandchildren. I've been with the same woman my entire life. And I have implemented the conservative values, the conservative principles into my children. They, in turn, have related to their grandchildren. And, folks, to see what this damn country has turned out to be and to see what we have become makes everything, all the spectacular victories and all the spectacular feats that America was able to overcome, it nullifies them all, folks. World War II, it nullifies that. The Civil War, it nullifies that. The Revolutionary War, it nullifies it, folks. 
because you people have accepted what has happened here. That's what makes this most difficult to pallet of all. It's not the fact that it's some sort of uh, coup d'etat that's happening in America, and you know a small faction of bureaucrats is overtaking the government, and somehow you know, you know we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, I don't know some sort of political debacle happens. No, no, no. This is not what's happening. What's happening here is that the American people are willingly they're getting on their knees. They're begging for their own Fabian socialism. All right. I mean, you know, they're begging for their own communism, for heaven's sake. You have people actually entertaining the notion, all right? And I'm talking about leftists. I'm talking about people that supposedly have PhDs, people that are supposed to be authorities in supposed political science, political philosophy, political theology. You've actually got people entertaining the communist notion out here. You've got people actually believing that somehow communist is a good idea. It's a good thing. It's ridiculous. I mean, you know, folks, what do we have to live for if we don't have our own independent selves to live for? Don't you understand that's what communism takes away? Communism takes away the opportunity for one to achieve something on their own merits, on their own skills, on their own hard work, on their own hard labor. In communism, everybody works the same. Everybody owns the same things. Everybody listens to the same music. Everybody does what the government tells them to do. And I don't want to live in that, damn it. I want to live in America where we have freedom, where we have the freedom of speech. We have the freedom of religion. We have the freedom of the press, not this corporate piece of multinational crap that we turn on every time we turn on the television set. We have the right to bear arms, folks. And let me tell you, these damn Democrats and these liberals are going to try to take that away from you very, very shortly. We had a show about this last time. Folks, practice your Second Amendment rights. Don't allow these liberals to take that away from you, folks. Don't let them do it. Those are our rights, damn it, the people's rights. Our forefathers gave us those rights, you stupid idiots. And don't let them limit it either. You got these ass clowns in some parts of the country that are saying, um, well, we're not going to ban guns, but we're only going to allow you to buy uh, uh, one or two guns a month. That's all you can do. Don't allow them to put any kind of limitation or anything of that nature. A man is within his constitutionally protected right to bear arms if he deems necessary. If he's a law-abiding citizen, if he pays his taxes, well, by God, he has a Second Amendment right to participate in bearing arms. Thirdly, folks, this immigration issue, folks, and I can't, I hate to keep bearing on it. I, I, I hate to keep twisting it in your damn uh, heart like a damn dagger. But, folks, this immigration issue is going to come to a header within the next four to five months. And I made this prediction on the last show, and I'm going to make it again. Mark my words, within the next four or five months, the Barack Obama administration and these liberal long hairs in Congress are going to initiate some sort of amnesty bill given the 60 million-plus illegal immigrants that are in this country, citizenship. I'm telling you, folks, I guarantee it. Mark my words. Mark my words, you idiot. Obama and the administration is going to call for amnesty. And, folks, let me tell you something. If you're in America right now, you should know something. And if you don't believe me, you go up and ask a police officer. Illegal immigrants in this country have more rights than American citizens. They can commit murders. They can commit rapes. They can go out and do the most heinous crimes, and they won't see the light of day of a prison. They'll just be deported. And they can come back over here across the fence and do the whole damn thing over again, folks. On top of which, now that we have all these hundreds of thousands of jobs each month, Last month it was over 600,000 jobs lost. We're having thousands of jobs lost each day. Where are these people that are unemployed? Where are they going to go get jobs, folks? Well, they're going to have to go get jobs in this service industry-based economy that I've been complaining about for two years. 
They're going to have to go get some work in the service industry-based economy, and they're going to have to compete with the illegal immigrants that are in this country right now who will work below minimum wage. That's right, folks. These damn immigrants will work below minimum wage, and how are you, as an American citizen, going to compete with that? How are you going to compete with that? Think about it, you idiot. You can't. And on top of which, folks, these illegal immigrants can collect the entitlements that any American citizen can, can collect. They can collect uh, so much money per kid. They can collect food stamps, welfare, government cheese, the works. And they don't pay taxes, damn it. They don't pay taxes. And you do. It's your taxpayer dollars. It's your taxpayer dollars that's feeding these pieces of crap. I can't believe it. Do you call yourself an American and you allow this crap to happen in America? This is an invasion. This is an invasion. And you need to do something about it. You piece of... You piece of crap. You need to do something about it. And I'm not joking, folks. I'm not joking. You need to do something about it here. I can't believe that this is America when we're giving all these illegal immigrants all kinds of amnesty, all kinds of entitlements, and you've got the liberals. You've got these stupid bed wedding liberal long hairs out here trying to sit here, and, and what, what, what are they going to do? They're going to try to throw a humanitarian spin on it. Yeah, that's right. You know, a humanitarian spin. A humanitarian spin is what you're going to throw on this crap. And I'm not going to let you do it, folks. I'm not going to let you throw a humanitarian spin on this ridiculous immigration malarkey. All right? And I know that I'm breathing hard, folks, and I know that I may be on the brink of a damn coronary, but once again, folks, I don't... I don't care. And maybe if I damn drop dead, maybe if I sit here and keel over with a damn coronary, maybe it will spark some synapses in you damn liberal and feminist long hairs that are out here muff-diving on Gloria Steinem, that are out here worshiping pictures of Karl Marx. Maybe you people will start realizing that America means something, that America is about the Constitution, that this is a constitutional republic, and that our forefathers accorded us unalienable rights that weren't given to man prior to that document, and you idiots are wiping your dirty ass cracks with it, and you should all be ashamed of yourselves, all of you. You should all be ashamed of yourselves. Anyway, folks, I got a lot of liberal long hairs up in here flapping their fat sausages of the fingers on the keyboard in my chat room talking a bunch of malarkey. But if you want to debate with me, folks, I mean, bring it on. Bring it on right now, 646-652-4869. If you're one of these damn liberal long hairs, if you're one of these feminist bull dykes that actually believes that this administration and this new America that we're transitioning into is some sort of a good thing, then I want you to give me a call right now and tell me why it's a good damn thing. Don't be sitting there tickling your ass cracks, guzzling down some damn cheese whiz in your single wide trailer, flapping your fat Cheeto stained fingers on the keyboard, talking malarkey about me. I want you to get your fat jelly ass off your couch, off your desk chair, or whatever the case might be, and I want you to get up on here and give me a damn call right now. 646-652-4869. I will provide substance upon substance upon substance upon substance on the debating table, and I will make all of you stupid liberal and feminist long hairs look like a bunch of mental midgets, and there will be nothing you can say about it. You'll be stumbling over your own tongue like John Edwards trying to explain hospice adultery. And I guarantee it, folks. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. We're uh, approaching, or we're well into the second hour of True Conservative Radio. I'm your host, the man they call Ghost. And before I take another call, please, I want you to bookmark the webpage, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Bookmark the webpage, put it on your favorites. Do whatever it takes and check back up to date with me. I broadcast Monday through Friday between the hours of 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Central United States time. 
And don't forget to check out the blog while you're at it at ghostpolitics.blogspot.com. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and take a call here. Robbie, is that you, Robbie? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, what's going on? Nothing much. So, uh, what do you believe on uh, legalizing marijuana? What? I don't think it should be legal. Well, look, well, it depends. Why is that? Well, look, look, this is what I this is what I say. You either gonna okay. make all drugs legal, or don't make them, any of them legal. Well, say if we have cancer and then need marijuana, like uh, medical marijuana, is that fine? What? If somebody has cancer, they should be able to get medical marijuana, don't you think? Well, why why can't it be another medication? Why can't it be like, uh, you know, something legal? Because the uh, thing about marijuana is it helps the cancer. It helps fight cancer better. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to leave it at that, Robbie, because that, that isn't really much substance. You know, it, it helps the cancer better. I mean, is there any scientific notion that, you know, smoking a joint or smoking a fat filly blunt is somehow going to remedy the cancer any better. Look, I, I understand the debate. I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, sick people shouldn't have the option of going out and smoking a few fatties if they want to. But this is what I say, all right? This is what I say. You know, if we're going to, you know, decriminalize marijuana, or if we're going to somehow legalize marijuana, we should just legalize all drugs in general so we can take out the black market of drugs. I've said that on a program, uh, you know, I guess it was maybe a couple of years back, I said that on a program, we need to legalize all drugs, all right, all of them, and uh, decriminalize marijuana especially. And what, what I mean by decriminalize it is not going into your corner store and buying yourself a damn pack of marijuana. I'm talking about decriminalizing it. If you have it on your person, well, you're, you're not going to get taken down for it. But if you're intoxicated and driving behind the wheel, well, then you should be taken down, that sort of thing. But I think that we need to eliminate the entire black market of drugs, folks. Eighty, <clears throat> excuse me, eighty percent of the world's drugs are consumed right here in America. And why are eighty percent of the world's drugs consumed in America? Well, because they're illegal, and there's a huge profit margin for making them illegal, folks. If you make them illegal, it makes them harder to get, and it makes them harder to bring into the country, which makes the price go up, which makes millionaires. All right which makes millionaires out of idiots that just, you know, have a good connection or some Bolivian flake somewhere, and they're able to go out and push it out in the streets. I say, why don't you just legalize the whole damn thing? Why don't you let the government, you know, cultivate it, distribute it, uh, you know, put in these uh, distribution centers in high-dense metropolis areas and have the government distribute the damn thing? It would not only bring down the cost of, of drugs tremendously, it would eliminate the black market. It would eliminate drug dealers. All right? It would eliminate drug dealers altogether, folks, and that's what's causing crime in America is these damn drug dealers going into each other's territory and shooting each other up because they want each other's customers out here. All right? And then, you know, you have all these, who, whatever it is, crackheads, cokeheads, meth heads, uh well, you know, what ecstasy heads, whatever the hell new drugs there are out here, have them go to these government uh, distribution centers, and they have to give, uh, you know, an ID card. They have to, if they want drugs, they have to fill out an ID card, and then the government can track down who is using drugs, how much they're using, and and actually sell the drugs to these users at a very discounted rate, but at a profitable rate to where it can generate actual tax revenues for the government so we can pay down this damn debt and start implementing some integrity in the currency out here. All right, now that's just a suggestion. All right, I know that's probably not going to happen because, well, frankly, I mean, you know, nobody really wants drugs legalized, do they? I mean, you know, you got people making their livelihoods on it, the DEA. You think all the people that work for that bureaucracy of the DEA, you think they want drugs legalized? Hell no. You think the narcotics departments of police departments everywhere, do you think they want drugs legalized? Hell no, they don't. All right? I mean, this is what it's about. It's, it's about keeping it illegal so it can keep people employed. So that's why I'm saying, I mean, I hate, you know, when people bring up this whole marijuana issue. I mean, don't get me wrong. I agree. You know, I mean, you know, marijuana should be decriminalized. 
But if we're going to go that route, why don't we just decriminalize, well, not decriminalize everything, decriminalize marijuana, but legalize the other drugs and have the government distribute it. It's ethical, it'll be reasonable, and it'll cut out the drug dealers. What are the drug dealers going to do? What are the cartels that are taking over Mexico right now? Folks, Mexico is almost at the brink of a failed state, and I'm witnessing it firsthand here. I'm witnessing it right here in Texas. This is a failed state. And it's being taken over by narcotics uh, traffickers, uh, you know, people, uh, you know, that are out here, uh, you know, trafficking this ridiculous Bolivian flake and all this ridiculous nonsense. Well, we would just eliminate the black market. They'd have to go back to prostitution and gambling like the old days. <laughs> but, of course, it's not going to happen, like I said, folks. So let's just go ahead and stop beating that dead horse and let's go on to a uh, more important issue. Now... I'm going to go ahead and segue into the another subject matter that I had as uh, a part of the title of this program. Now, John Stewart, this ridiculous liberal on Comedy Central, who uh, you know is some supposed political comedic humorous. I don't know what you call this piece of crap. But anyway, this John Stewart, if you happen to know him or not know him, he's some supposed political comedic mouthpiece that is basically liberal in his ideologies. Well, he decided to do what Ghost did about two weeks ago. If you folks have been listening in to the True Conservative Radio Show, I called out Jim Cramer for being a piece of garbage, for being out here, was it, for the past three or four or five years, getting on that stupid show of his saying, hey, be bullish, hey, buy stocks, buy stocks in this, buy stocks in that. I mean, basically pumping and dumping the damn stock market for five years. I said that way before John Stewart said that, which has me wondering whether or not John Stewart is tickling his ass crack listening to this program in some fashion. And if you are, stop taking my material, you piece of crap. But anyway, uh, I called out Jim Cramer because Jim Cramer is what he is. You got uh, Mike Zucker, who is the president and CEO of NBC, I believe, uh, trying to say John Stewart was, uh, you know, uh, irresponsible in his remarks about Jim Cramer and and about uh, the CNBC pumping and dumping the stock market, making people believe that the stock market was going so great when they knew it wasn't. Uh, you know what, folks? I told you so, you piece of crap. I mean, Jim Cramer, just like all these Wall Street jerk nuts, they all were in it for themselves, folks. And that's all there is to it. I mean, you know, I, I don't understand why Jim Cramer should even have a job at this point. This guy, should, this guy's a piece of crap. I mean, he sold, uh, you know, everybody down the river. All right? I mean, you know, look at and, and I've got somebody here in the chat room, Mike from CA, saying he lost $20,000 because of that buffoon. And I don't blame you. I don't blame you. You were just trying to keep up to date. I mean, you thought that CNBC was a legitimate news source for business out here. And lo and behold, they're pumping and dumping stocks, for heaven's sake. I mean, are you kidding me? And this is what I'm saying, folks. If you are on the Internet and you are still looking at television for your news gathering and information, you are definitely intellectually lazy. Because these damn multinational corporations own all these media outlets. They own them all. And they're going to sit here and fashion your news uh, entertainment because that's basically what it is. It's all theater. It's all entertainment, folks. They don't give you the real news. They're giving you the latest rodent on Paris Hilton's rotten crotch. They're giving you, uh, you know, the latest news on Octomom and crap like that, instead of giving you the real news that you need to worry about as an American citizen. Folks, you need to take it upon yourselves to gather your own information. We are on the Internet. And, folks, let me tell you, these damn Democrats are trying... They're trying to, you know, regulate this Internet in some fashion. And I wrote an article about this. If you want to check it out, it's on my webpage, uh, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Go down to the link section and click the ghost article page. I wrote a, you know, fairly decent article about the ramifications for, you know, having any kind of regulation on the Internet. We can't have no regulation on the Internet. We can't do it, folks. And let me tell you, I know that the argument for the liberals to regulate the Internet is, oh, well, oh, we got a lot of child predators, and we got a lot of child pornography, and we got a lot of this, and we got a lot of that. 
you stupid idiots. If you're that concerned about these damn pedophiles, if you're that concerned about these child molesters, why are you giving them light sentences, you stupid liberal, long hair feminist, muff diving pieces of trash? Why are you giving these child molesters, these pedophiles, why are you giving them light sentences, you piece of crap? It's you liberals that are doing that, because if it were up to a real conservative, if it were up to a real true conservative, hey, if it were up to me, folks, if, if you're a damn child molester, you should be executed, plain and simple. You should be executed in the worst grotesque fashion available. You rob the innocence of a child which is probably one of the worst crimes of humanity, in my opinion, next to genocide. I, uh, I, I don't understand why you liberals who are trying to utilize this whole concept of, oh, there's child molesters on the Internet, and there's pedophiles. we got to regulate it. Why are you idiots giving them only two years in prison when they molest a child, you liberal piece of crap? Why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? Because you like it. Because you justify it. It's you liberals and you feminists that are justifying single-parent families being the majority of the day. It's you liberals and you feminists that are justifying teenage pregnancy. It's you liberals and you feminists that are justifying all the ridiculous social ills that have now become the social norms. And it's you pieces of crap. You you it makes me sick! I'm sorry, folks. I'm sorry if I'm getting a little out of hand out here. I'm sorry about this ridiculous garbage here, but folks, it gets me upset to my stomach. It makes me sick that these people out here, these liberals and these feminists can try to sit here and an attempt to try to regulate the Internet, because, folks, they are, all right? They are going to try to regulate the Internet, folks. I mean, they already, they already tried to push it in this stimulus package, all right? So what I'm telling you is, folks, I want you to keep up to date. I want you to keep up to date with what is happening with Internet regulation, folks, because we can't have any kind of regulation on the Internet. No regulation whatsoever. No kind of government consortium. No type of private consortium. Nothing. The Internet should be free because it's the last bastion of freedom that we have left. And I'm not just talking about American people. I'm talking about the world. This is the last bastion of freedom that anybody has in the world. So if you're being oppressed in your modern-day reality of society, you can get on the Internet and voice your opinion. So if anybody, folks, anybody tries to give you this malarkey that we need to regulate the Internet, don't let them do it. By God, don't let them do it. <clears throat> anyway, folks, I better calm down here. Give me a call, 646-652-4869 is the number to call. We're going to take a caller here from the 540 area code. You're on the air. Hello? 540? Stop playing with your Peter Popper and, and, and dog. Hello? Anyway, folks, you see, this is what I'm saying here, folks. I'm sure those folks out there that are being quiet, that are calling up and, you know, not saying a damn thing, I'm sure they're a bunch of liberal bedwetting long hairs. And I'm sure they want to sit here and try to agitate the program, and they want to take the program in another direction of some sort. But, folks, uh, you know, they can't do it. They can't provide true substance to debate a true conservative like myself. They can't do it. How can they justify all the malarkey that has taken uh, place thus far? I mean, how can they do it? They can't do it, folks. Anyway, we got the 973 area code. Hello, 973, you're on the air. Yeah, Ghost, how you doing? How's it going? Uh, I just wanted to make a quick comment. I, I, You know, it's the liberals, it's some Republicans, all of them are trying to enact policies that are going to limit our Internet activity. You know, the the fact of the matter is everyone in Washington are traitors. You know, I, I don't even, I don't buy I the agree. system anymore. I agree, I'm not a I Republican really either. Yeah, I really don't buy the party system anymore. They're all crooks, uh, Ghost, you know. We have the liberal. they're all friends at the end of the day. 
you know? And they're all trying to enact these policies that are going to, you know, disable us. And you're right. This is the last bit of freedom we have left. So I say we fight for it. The, the last bit of freedom we have left is right, because nowadays, I mean, you've got all these regulations, the more government in our faces. We've got taxes that we're going to have to pay at the end of the year out here. I mean, mm-hmm. it's getting pretty ridiculous. I mean, you've got the gross domestic product. Uh, at 40 percent on the government spending end, which is unprecedented. The, you know, the only governments that spend over t- over 25 percent are Fabian socialist or damn near communist. Well, what do you think about this go green stuff? I think. I, well, look, the go green. I, I think we should all recycle. Okay, there's nothing wrong with recycling crap. But as far as global warming is concerned, global warming is a bunch of malarkey. It is crap. It's garbage. Uh, it is being utilized by these consor- a consortium of different people. It's not just one different specific, or it's not one, one specific group that's after a specific agenda. But yeah. inevitably, the goal is is to tax everybody in the world for breathing. Yeah. That's it's, that's unbelievable. That's but look, what, I, I, that's the my, inevitable my, goal. My, yeah, my phone is going to go out, so I'm going to go back to listening through the room. But I just want to call in and say that. Go keep up the well, good work. Thank you very much. You have yourself a good evening, sir. Yeah, I know folks that are sitting here saying, oh, well, I can't believe that he said global warming was a fraud. Well, of course global warming is a fraud, folks. i said this on several shows in the past. I mean, if it's not a fraud, well, then apparently the human beings on this earth are affecting not only the earth's atmosphere, but apparently it's affecting Mars's atmosphere, folks. Because Mars, and you can look this up if you don't believe me, if you think I'm just yanking this out of my derriere, Mars's ice caps are receding at an even faster rate than the ice caps here on this planet. Now, is it just a coincidence, or is it the fact that human beings are so filthy and disgusting, and they leave so many big carbon footprints, that it's affecting Mars, it's affecting the galaxy, it's affecting the universe! So we have to tax you for breathing. Oh, yeah, folks, they're going to start taxing us for all kinds of crap, folks. And that's why I strongly advise you to bookmark that web page, all right, taxpayer.net, folks, taxpayer.net, because I guarantee you they are going to take our heights and our body weights and make some sort of a bureaucratic judgment call on how much uh, we should pay in breathing tax or carbon footprint tax. Haven't you, haven't you heard that word within the past five to ten years? Carbon footprint, carbon footprint, carbon footprint. What the hell does that, what the hell does that mean? It's language to hypnotize you into believing that somehow if you don't pay a tax, not only for how much you, you know, have to take a fart, because, you know, let's be honest, folks, that's why they're claiming to tax you. You know, that you're, 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 you're <clears throat> letting off a lot of toxic gases that are bad for humanity, that are bad for, uh, uh, that are, that are bad for the earth, all this other nonsense here. But, folks, they also want to tax you on how much you drive. Have you heard about that? Yeah, and that, that almost became law here. Uh, you know, these idiots that were trying to pile on these amendments on these stimulus bills out here, they actually wanted to tax you on how much you drive. You know, we usually pay our taxes at the gas pump, folks. Every time you pay for those high gas prices, uh, you're being taxed at the gas pump there. But here they want to install speedometers, and, you know, they they damn well almost near doing that with all these all, what do you call these, OnStar? Uh, Folks, I strongly advise you, do not get these OnStars on your car, all right? Now, I know that, you know, if you're in an accident, it can save you, blah, blah, blah. But, folks, uh, the bottom line is is that they implement some sort of garbage that, you know, charges you uh, a tax on how much you drive. That OnStar little equipment is going to come nice and handy for the government to make a judgment call or make an accurate judgment call on how much you're driving your car. All right, I mean, that's all there is to it. So all this going green crap, I think it's ridiculous. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm a small business owner. I have a couple of businesses, and I hate to say that I've been capitalizing off these stupid, uh, you know, tree huggers out here that'll pay an extra five bucks for something that costs two bucks, 
because it says green on it or because it says organic or some ridiculous malarkey like that. Hey, I'm an American. I'm a capitalist. I love it. All right? But the bottom line is is that I think that what everyone should at least do is recycle. There's nothing wrong with recycling because, uh, you know, what the hell? It's the right thing to do. But as far as going out here and getting a tax and uh, taxing me for breathing, taxing me for going out and using my car, taxing me for this, taxing me uh, because I don't have a, a certain kind of toilet, or taxing me because I don't have a certain type of air conditioner that's energy efficient, taxing me because I don't have the certain type of windows that are energy efficient. I mean, this is the, this is the road we're going here, folks. I mean, it's bad enough that we're taxed for everything. I mean, folks, we are, ta- we are the most taxed uh, populace on the face of the planet. And I know that's hard to believe because you've got a lot of socialist uh, countries that are out here taking about 60% of people's paychecks. Well, folks, if you really take a look at how much taxes that you're paying, I'm talking about every kind of tax you can think of. It's just unbearable. It's unbelievable. It's disgusting. It's stupid. Anyway, folks, 646-652-4869. Now, we got 30 minutes left in the program. Uh, before I move on, folks, uh, <clears throat> once again, I wanted to extend my thanks to all those who are listening to me live right now. Thank you very much for listening in. I also want to thank those who listen to me in the archive. Uh, that's the bulk of my listener base. Uh, they download the program, they put in their iPods, and they go out to work, and they listen in to the conservative commentary that I had this evening. I just want to thank all of you for listening, whether you like me, whether you hate me, whether you agree, whether you disagree. What I hope that you get from this program is that we all, as an American people, as an American populace, have a responsibility to take a part in our government. And that means you either need to get involved by going out and organizing a group of people so you can be an elective force, or you yourself, as a taxpayer, as a family person, as a law-abiding citizen, go out and run for something. There are so many bureaucratic government positions, folks. I strongly urge you, please, we need honest people out here. If you are an honest person, if you pay your taxes, if you believe in family, I strongly urge you, please, go run for something. And if you happen to be a listener of this program and you do run for something, folks, please let us know on this program. We will help you out. I, I personally will, you know, give you an interview. I'll help you out if you need some damn websites done, if you need anything. I want true conservatives, I want people who believe in America, who believe in the Constitution, to start running for something. We need to start running for something. We need real American people that are going to implement American objectives, not corporate or multinational corporation objectives. I'm talking about objectives for America. So please, folks, I strongly urge you, participate in this government. I mean, participate even in the most smallest, minute way. I mean, go out you know, uh, to a damn speaking engagement of, of your mayor or a city council person or, or somebody in your local government. Go out there and stand up. Ask them questions. Call up your congressman. Call up your senate. I mean, give me a break. And, and, and secondly, and you know, of course, I got a lot of people in here uh, talking about the illegal immigrant situation, folks. I, I agree with you, folks. We cannot allow amnesty here, folks. And I don't want to get back on this subject, but I'm going to have a little side note here, folks. You need to call your congressman. You need to call your senator if you really don't want these illegal immigrants in this country. You need to tell these people that you don't want them, and that you are going to organize a group of true American voters, people that can vote. And you're going to unelect each and every one of these pieces of crap that are out here showing sympathy for these illegal immigrants. We can't allow it. We can't stand it. We can't stand for it. And that's why I'm urging you, folks, if you're a true American patriot, if you're a true American patriot, go out and call these Congress people and say, we don't want these illegal immigrants in here anymore. Get rid of them. All right, now, well, what, what, what are we going to do? How do we get rid of them? Well, folks, I already told you this, all right? I've already told you how to get rid of illegal immigrants, and, that's, and we don't have to round them up. We don't have to go and run roughshod, and it's like the wild west out here. We've got to wrangle uh, illegal immigrants. No, 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 no. We don't have to do nothing of that nature. All we do is the American people needs to force the federal government 
to cut federal funding to sanctuary cities. All right, folks? You just cut the funding to sanctuary cities, folks, and I guarantee you that this illegal immigration problem will it'll rectify itself. It will rectify itself. If you cut federal funding to sanctuary cities that are providing safe havens for these illegal immigrants, how are the cities going to fund themselves? They're not going to do it. How are they going to pay their police officers? How are they going to pay their city officials? They can't. And the only way that they're going to get paid by the federal government again is if they rectify the illegal immigrant situation in their country, folks. It is the easiest remedy for illegal immigration, folks. You cut off federal funding to the cities that provide sanctuary to these illegals, and I guarantee you that will be part of the remedy. The other part of the remedy, folks, the other part of the remedy is to get every CEO, every business owner, anybody who either employs illegal immigrants or has employed illegal immigrants or uses illegal immigrants for any type of labor, all right, we need to gather all those CEOs, all those business owners, and we need to throw them in prison. We need to throw them in prison and lock them up and throw away the key. Do you understand that, folks? And I don't care how, what people say. I don't care if you're one of these small business owners that uses illegal immigrants. You need to be thrown in prison. You're a traitor. If you use an illegal immigrant... For labor, if you're hiring an illegal immigrant, you are a traitor! Do you understand that? These illegal immigrants are invading this country. They're taking American jobs. They're out here collecting American entitlements, and they don't pay taxes. Do you understand this? They're single-handedly changing the social landscape of this country, and you are enabling this if you're a business owner, if you're a CEO that hires illegal immigrants. You should be thrown in prison, damn it. You should be thrown in prison, locked up, thrown away the key, and that's all there is to it, because you are a damn traitor, you piece of, piece of crap. And that's all I got to say about that. If you hire illegal immigrants, if you're paying illegal immigrants, you're a traitor, and you deserve to be thrown in prison. That's all there is to it. And I know, folks, I know that people listen in, and they're like, Ghost, you need to calm down. You need to take a chill pill. But, folks, let me tell you something. The reason that I'm passionate about these subject matters, the reason that I talk with so much fury is because I care. I care about this country. I care about the Constitution. I want it to still be around for my children and my great-great-grandchildren. I want them to still have it, damn it. Don't you understand that? But it seems to me that most people are more worried about embracing this new socialist and communist idea. Uh, they, they want to embrace this new world where nobody's a loser. That's right, folks. They want to embrace this new quasi-communist socialist crap and have all the losers in America not feel like they're losers. Huh? I mean, you know, uh, can you believe this crap? Uh, you know, this is what really makes me sick, folks. I mean, haven't you noticed, if you happen to be a law-abiding citizen, I'm talking about somebody who raises their family, pays their taxes, never been in jail, never collected a damn welfare check or an entitlement check. I'm talking about a true American citizen. Don't you feel like you're taking it up the tailpipe? Don't you feel like you're getting the shaft in this America and that all the screw-ups, all the idiots that made all the bad decisions in life are getting the breaks they're the ones that are like, oh, it's okay. Let me go ahead and give you an entitlement check because you're a drug addict. Oh, let me go ahead and give you some entitlements because you shitted out five or six kids from five or six different fathers. Oh, it's okay. We're going to go give you some money. I mean, meanwhile, who is getting the shaft in all this equation? It's the true American people. The true American people. And I, I, hear, I see here in the chat room saying something is wrong. You're damn right something is wrong, and it's the American public that is wrong. Because the American public, folks, with all due respect, is willingly accepting this. These people are not out here throwing a ruckus about it. 
They're not out here threatening uh, politicians to unelect them from office, folks, because that's what we should be doing. We should be confronting these politicians and saying, hey, we're going to hold you accountable for all the garbage you did while you were in office, and we're going to unelect your ass, you piece of crap. We're going to unelect your ass. But you see, the only way we can do that, folks, is if people like you, and I don't care how minor or uh, how minute of an individual you think you are, but you as an individual can help by going out and organizing people. All right? Organize people behind a principle. Organize people behind an idea. Organize people behind an issue. Whatever it takes, make yourself a voting force out here. That's the only way that you're going to be a voting force. That's the only way that these damn politicians are going to listen to you, because the only other way they're going to listen to you is if you throw hundreds of thousands of dollars in their campaign contribution accounts. It's sad. It really is sad. And I got somebody here from California saying, you know, I think it's too late for California. Hey, I think it's too late for California too, folks. I mean, California is getting so desperate. They are so much bankrupt that they're talking about – Doing what I was alluding to earlier, they're talking about taxing marijuana to all the potheads out there. Uh, I think I read uh, in an article today that they're thinking about talking about uh, charging people for public restrooms. Uh, they're talking about uh, you know some kind of uh, they're they're thinking of all kinds of taxes to tax these poor Californian people out here. So, folks, I. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. I, 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 don't, I mean, I think America at this point is at a very vulnerable state. And the only, thing, the only way that we have a bright lining in this pit of darkness is if the American people wake up. All right? And what do they have to do? They don't have to do nothing crazy, folks. I'm not advocating something ridiculous out here. All right? I'm not advocating that we go out and cause all kinds of ruckus or throw a coup or anything of that nature. I'm just saying that you need to participate in this government because this government at this, at this time still somewhat works. The only way it doesn't work is when they initiate legis uh, legislation or they initiate laws that nullify all of our rights, that nullify all of our uh, voting rights, that nullify this government. That's the only time when we don't have a chance. But, folks, we still have a chance. It's up to you, damn it. It's up to you to go out there and organize. And please, I'm begging you, all of you people out there, I don't care what you believe in. I don't care what your political perspective is. But what I do want to get through your thick, numb skulls is that you should have America and the Constitution at the front of your objective. No matter what your politics are, you should have the Constitution and America at, at the forefront of your political ideologies. Do you understand that? All of you. And you need to go out there and fix this country. I'm calling on everybody who listens to me, please, go out there. 646-652-4869. Please add to your favorites, folks. Uh, the web page of this program, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Uh, once again, folks, uh, we're getting great numbers. I'm getting a whole thousands of downloads each day. Uh, you know, I got a whole bunch of people who listen to me live. I, I know that these uh, broadcasts are sporadic, and uh, I'm sorry, uh, you know, for them to be so sporadic, but I wanted to extend my thanks to everybody who's listening in. Because, folks, we are getting more and more advertisers, according to the Blog Talk Radio Network. We're getting people that actually want to advertise. Believe it or not, for all you stupid bedwetting liberal long hairs and muff-diving feminists, there's actually people that want to advertise right here on the True Conservative Radio Show. And, folks, I want to uh, extend, uh, please, folks, if you can, support our sponsors. All right, support our sponsors. If you like True Conservative Radio, if you like the program, if you appreciate the commentary, please go out and support those sponsors because it takes a pair of cojones. All right, it takes a pair of cojones to want to sponsor this show, given the fact that I've got all these damn liberals and these feminists sitting here crying foul, giving me death threats, spreading slanderous lies about me, and all this other malarkey. So please, folks, if you love the show, if you love the program, Please go out there, visit the sponsors, and visit them as frequently as you can, folks, because we need your help. That's the only way that's, that this show is going to be consistent, the only way that this show is going to be frequent. I mean, it could be every damn day, but, folks, I need your help, so please 
I thank you for listening in, but visit those sponsors and thank the sponsors for uh, sponsoring True Conservative Radio. Those are true patriotic companies. Anybody who sponsors this program is a true American patriot, and they deserve patronage. So, folks, please patronize those sponsors. I, I don't mean to sound like some uh, ridiculous, uh, you know, advertisement here. Uh, but, folks, seriously, uh, for all those that have listened to the program, you know that I, I don't hide behind anything. I say what I mean. I mean what I say. I have said some controversial things that have gotten me shut off the air. They have taken me down several times. I've been banned from my space for life. Um, you know, I, I, all these things that have happened, folks, and it's because I believe in this country. I believe in what I say. And everything I say on this program, I say it with passion. I say it with fury because I love this country, and I love America. I love the Constitution, and I need you folks to help me. Help us. Help America. Go out there and spread the word about the True Conservative Radio Program. Spread it out there on the blogs, on the forums, in the chat rooms. Start your own blog and write about True Conservative Radio. Go out there and get a YouTube uh, little video and promote True Conservative Radio, folks. I need your help. We, as American people, need to take back our country and participate in our government, folks. We need to do it. We need to do it. We need to get up off our fat asses and put the freaking fork down for about five minutes and start understanding that this is serious times, that we need to take serious measures. We need to read every bill. We need to look at every action that our government takes. We need to start keenly aware of what we are doing out here. We need to do it, damn it. Folks, because if we don't do it, we are going to be up a paddle without a creek, if you, or without a, a hop a creek without a paddle, excuse me. Sorry, I'm stumbling over my own tongue like Al Gore trying to explain how he invented the internet. But folks, I just can't believe that this is the new America. I can't believe that American people are willingly falling for this crap. They're willingly falling for it, damn it! I can't believe it! And let me tell you something, folks. I, I'm sweating. It's colder than hell in this damn room, but I'm sweating up a storm. And the reason I'm sweating up a storm is because my blood is boiling. And the reason my blood is boiling is because America is willing submittingly to the damn feminist and liberal media. Piece of crap! I better calm down, folks. Now, now I know that uh, people are listening in. They're like, you know what, Ghost? You need to calm down here. Your, bro your blood pressure is going to go through the roof. But you know what, folks? I don't care. I think that right now in America, it's too important. It's too damn important to just sit by on your fat jelly asses and just watch America being flushed down the proverbial toilet. I think it is too important just to sit back and go quietly in that good night. It's too damn important. And that's why, folks, I need your help. And not only do I need your help, America needs your help. America needs your help because they are too stupid. They are too anesthetized with liberalism and feminism to realize the writing on the wall. And what is the writing on the wall? Well, it's this quasi-communist socialist crap that we've come to know and love right now, folks. That's what it is. It's this new communist socialist garbage that we've come to know and love out here. <sighs> I better calm down, folks. 646-652-4869. Now, we got 12 minutes left in the program, folks. 12 minutes left in the True Conservative Radio program. If you want to get anything that you want to chime in about, give me a call. I know that I get a lot of emails from folks that state, Oh, Ghost, I don't want to call the program because I'm scared. You scream so much and you get so angry. Well, the reason I get so angry and the reason I scream so much is because nobody has taken this serious. Nobody has taken the American uh, situation here serious. Everybody is continuing to think that everything's going to be okay. you got a bunch of Americans out here. I mean, uh, we just said it today in this program 
Uh, last year, the birth rate topped the 1950s baby boom. That means that the baby boomers have been out birthed, if you will, by the generation that has happened within the past couple of years, folks. And 40% of those women have had those children out of wedlock. And, folks, I have said this for two years. All right, single-parent families are the majority of the day. We are morally bankrupt, and as a result, we are economically bankrupt, and we're about to be politically bankrupt. So where does that leave us, America? Where does that leave us? It leaves us with nothing but incompetence. It leaves us with nothing but implosion. I mean, that's why I get so angry. That's why I get so upset, because I love this country. I love America. I don't care what your political perspective is. I'm not a Democrat. Hell no, I'm not a Democrat, and I spit on liberalism, and I'm a proud anti-feminist. And I'm not a Republican. I'm a conservative, damn it. I'm a conservative. I'm not going to sit here and make excuses for some ridiculous political party out here when they know damn well they submitted to liberalism and feminism, and I'm talking about the Republican Party. And they're, and they're making no qualms about it at this point. They're making no secrets that they want to go towards that liberal and feminist light. They're making no qualms about it. you got Michael Steele over here talking about how he wants to embrace this crap, calling out Rush Limbaugh. It's ridiculous, folks. But the only people that can change it is you. And I know that, you know, you get a lot of jagoffs who get on the Internet or get on the radio or get on the TV, and they say that all the time. But, folks, listen to the genuine quality of my delivery here. We need you. And if you're an honest individual, if you're a family man or a family woman, if you are an honest person, if you pay your taxes, and if you've never been in trouble with the law, and if you've never collected an entitlement or anything of that nature, we need you to run for office. We need you to run for public office out here, folks, and we'll support you. We need honest people to run for office, but don't be corrupted by the game, folks, because that's what will happen. You'll be corrupted by this sick and twisted, bureaucratic, power-hungry, autocratic, horrific game of politics. You need to run for office. You need to organize, all right? And, folks, if you're timid, if you're shy, if you don't want to be boisterous about political subject matters, but you want to get involved, you want to figure out a way to get other people involved, well, folks, forward these episodes to anybody you know. Episodes of this show, True Conservative Radio. Email them, and that will give you a breaking point. That will give you a breaking of the ice, so to speak, on talking to people about politics. Email this show to anybody you know and ask them to listen to it. And then talk to them about it. You don't have to tell them your political perspective, but talk to them about it, folks. We need to start talking about politics. We need to start talking about economics. We need to start talking about our freedom. We need to start talking about the Constitution. Because if we don't, this country is going down, and it's nobody else's fault but the man in the mirror or the woman in the mirror. It's your fault. Your fault, damn it. It's your fault because you allowed it to happen, because this government was made by the people and for the people. But instead, the people decided to go out on a shopping spree and keep up with the Joneses and just neglect their political obligations. And as a result, we have multinational corporations that have taken control of our government, and we're seeing the repercussions of that very scenario right now, you idiots! And that's why I say, that's why I always say that the American public sucks. The American public sucks a chrome off of a 57 Chevy bumper, folks, because they allowed it to happen. And I can't believe it! I can't believe it, damn it! You piece of... I can't believe this crap! I can't believe it, folks. Can you? Can you believe it, folks? Can you believe that this is the new America? Can you believe that this is what everyone who died in every major war in American history, this is what they died for? Can you believe it? Because I can't believe it, folks. 
I can't believe that this is what America has turned out to be. I can't believe that this is what America has turned out to become of itself. Uh, this ridiculous version of what America is. It makes me sick. Now, I got somebody in here talking about Alex Jones. And, folks, uh, I know there's six minutes left in the program. For some reason, I have a lot of people uh, from Alex Jones' listening pool coming over to True Conservative Radio listening in. And I appreciate your patronage for all you Alex Jones uh, Kool-Aid drinkers out there. I appreciate your patronage. But, folks, Alex Jones is a bunch of crap, all right? And you can tell him I said that. Please, if you know Alex Jones, forward him this damn show and tell him I think he's a bunch of garbage. All right? I mean, you know, all that garbage. And I watched that ridiculous movie that he just put out called The Obama Deception. I watched that piece of crap. Folks, I said about 90% of the crap that he said in that damn film. I said that for the past two years on this program. I've been saying that for two years, damn it. And while I was saying all the crap that Alex Jones is singing now, back then Alex Jones was talking about Bohemian Grove and uh, people who worship owls and, uh, you know, uh, uh, reptilians. Uh, I don't know what the hell he was talking about. But, folks, with all due respect to your intelligence, Alex Jones is a bunch of garbage. I'm calling him out, and I've called him out consistently. I will be more than happy to have that piece of crap on my show so I can put him on the spot. I will make that man look like a mental midget. I will cut him down lower than a leprechaun's nutsack since we're so close to St. Patrick's Day. Because all he is, folks, is a ridiculous con man, in my opinion. All right? In my opinion, this idiot has a new conspiracy every six months. And you know what I find sick about Alex Jones? Is that this moron claims that, oh, you know, there's a global conspiracy, and it's the Federal Reserve, it's, it's the Bilderberg, it's Bohemian Grove. It's Satanism. It's Moloch worshipers. It's reptilians ruling the earth. I mean, this guy has a new story every six months. And what does he want his followers to do? What does Alex Jones want his followers to do? He wants them to purchase products. <laughs> I find it funny that he is so against all this crap in America. He's so against the... Uh, our American financial system. He's so against the Federal Reserve. He's so against the American government. He tries to say the American government wants to put cancer in our vaccines and wants to go out and kill us and take us away and all this crap. And yet he wants you to purchase videos and books and all kinds of propaganda. And I, I just It's just hypocrisy, folks, all right? If you're going to drink that Alex Jones Kool-Aid, that's your problem. And don't get me wrong, I've heard Republicans on this very blog talk radio network that were entertaining the Alex Jones notion. And they should be ashamed of themselves, all of them. Anybody who entertains Alex Jones as legitimate political commentary is a damn idiot. And Alex Jones, if you happen to be listening, I'm calling your stupid, fat, bloated, cheese whiz guzzling, beer guzzling piece of raspy voice crap out. I'm calling you out. That's all there is to it. Six four six. Well, there's only two minutes left in the program anyway. But Alex Jones, I'm calling you out. If you have any kind of testicular fortitude, you contact me. You contact my show, and I'll be more than happy to battle wits with you on this program. But I guarantee you, Mr. Jones, you and your stupid conspiracy theory nut job reptilian story is going to fall way short in substance when battling wits with yours truly. I mean, frankly, Alex Jones, everything that you said on that Obama deception, I've been saying for the past two years, where the hell have you been, you fat, bloated piece of cheese whiz guzzling, prostate-infected crap? Where the hell have you been? Where the hell have you been, Alex? 
I mean, with all due respect, I, I mean, I, I'll expect some residuals on all that money that you're making off the Obama deception. I've been saying that for two years, you piece of crap. I, I noticed in that stupid movie you didn't say anything about your little reptilian scapegoat uh, uh, wild goose chase or any of your uh, ridiculous, uh, you know, Bohemian Grove or Moloch worshiping or any of that other nonsense. You didn't say anything in that movie about that. But I don't blame you. I know that you're just trying to sell a movie, Alex. So why don't you get your fat ass off of the sideline into the front line? And if you're really are, are, are something other than a fear monger and you really want to help the situation, stop entertaining all this ridiculous, hyper sensational uh, conspiracy theory nonsense, which you have made. I don't know how much money on, Mr. Jones. Why don't you put that all aside and start getting with us out here on the front lines and start battling this liberal and, and feminist infestation of America. This is a battle of ideas, folks. That's exactly what this is. This is a battle of ideas, and the only way that we're going to combat this is with other ideas and hope, it, hope we can convince other people that the ideas of liberalism and feminism is nothing more than a sham, a skill, a, 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 just a, a bamboozling, if you will. Anyway, folks, I want to thank you very much for tuning in with me. Please uh, add to your favorites, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Please bookmark the blog as well. And uh, I'm also on Twitter, folks. Find me on Twitter. Ghost Politics is my name. Add me to your Twitter little friends list and uh, get up-to-date Twitters <laughs> from yours truly. Anyway, please support the sponsors, folks, by clicking on those sponsors. You're helping True Conservative Radio stay on the air. Thank you very much for tuning in. God bless America and death to feminism. Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. Tender, slow-roasted chicken breast, coated in our signature teriyaki glaze, where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet for a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. The bold flavor of Japan, now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere.